Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with alto saxophonist and composer Will Vinson. Originally from London and now in New York City, we spoke exactly one year to the date after our very first interview. We talked a lot about his newest 2016 album called Perfectly Out of Place. This album is full of jazz power led by Will on the sax. It also features Mike Moreno on the guitar and Jeff Ballard on the drums along with many others. He is promoting the album now and he also talked about what the future looks like and some other things. So dig this interview my friends. The funny thing about this is I, I date and catalog all of this pretty uh, systematically. We spoke exactly one year ago today. Oh is that really? Is that right? Wow. Yeah, isn't that weird? Uh, yeah, that is weird. Thank you for taking a little time out to talk about this wonderful new album, Perfectly Out of Place. Not at all. Let me get an idea of what is going on. Along with the release of this album, kind of get me up to date on what's been going on in your life. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I remember the, I remember our conversation last year. I remember going through, talking about all the things that I've been doing up until then. Where I'm releasing this record, which I'm uh, very excited about. It's It's taken a while to... We were probably talking about it last year, actually, because I recorded it at the beginning of last year, and uh, and it took it took a while to complete, but we 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 got there in the end. We, I think that the album was fully completed, mastered, and everything in in January or February. Uh, and after that, I was on tour for about a month, actually, in Australia, playing all over with an Australian band, but uh, who I all of whom I know really well, all of whom have spent time in in New York, a uh, great guitarist over there called James Muller, a uh, bass player called Sam Anning, who lived in New York until actually about a week before that tour started. He moved back to Australia. Dra- a dramatically underrated drummer called Ben Vanderwall. So we, we toured, we basically played everywhere that there is to play in Australia, which was, which was cool. Since then, yeah, I've uh, just been sort of uh, working on trying to get some dates set for uh for touring with this band still working on it but hopefully um in the late summer and and in the fall there'll be some of that going on we had a great cd release party in the fall i'll also be going out with gonzalo Rubalcaba for uh, two or three weeks with his tribute to charlie concert which i'm looking forward to hey, the lineup on this album is pretty phenomenal I and mean, you have a lot of very talented individuals on this album. Kind of talk to me about the lineup, how you got everybody together, and how you feel about <laughs> your chemistry on this album. Uh, let's see. I've known Matt Pemmon and Mike Moreno for uh, well over a decade. Yeah, okay. I've known Matt Pemmon and and, uh, and Mike Moreno for over a decade. We've played together a lot in that time. For whatever reason, it's never kind of lined up that Matt has ever been available for any of the projects that I've wanted to do or wanted to use him for until now. So that was kind of a a 10-year mission to get him involved on something. And Mike, as you know, a lot of my records in the past have featured Lager Lund, who is a similarly genius guitarist. But Lager and I and the bassist Orlando Lo Fleming now have a, a trio project called the Owl Trio. And sort of in 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 part for practical reasons and also for artistic reasons, we're keeping our own projects separate from, you know, sort of intermingling with, with that group because we want that we want that group to be unique. As a result, I've been, I mean, I always love playing with Mike, but the last two or three tours that I've done with my band, uh, Mike has done them, maybe more actually, you know, so that his sound is something that is in my ears all the time. And uh, I also have, you know, been meaning to, to record with him for some time. So that wasn't a difficult decision to make. Given the opportunity to record with, with Gonzalo, that's not a terribly difficult decision to make either. The the record was done for his label, Five Passion. Of course, it was always going to be on the table that that, that I could ask him to, to do it. I just thought, well, it, I, I mean, I love his playing so much. It would be ludicrous not to ask him to do it. And of course, he, uh, he was into it. I, I, I also thought that that was a kind of accidental perfect match actually with Gonzalo and, and Mike because Mike is is a very linear player you know I mean he, he, he it's it's interesting because he's he's simultaneously very guitaristic in the, in the way that he plays he does he does things that you can't do on other instruments which I really like I like when people you know are aware of the 
uniqueness of their own instrument and really use that. But he also has a uh, an improvising and soloing style that's very linear and very kind of horn-like. And of course, Lage has those things too, but he's much more of a kind of um, polyphonic, I suppose, player. Very, uh, you know, his his whole approach to voice leading and chordal movement is uh, such a kind of integral part of his playing, although it would have been an, an amazing pleasure to, to record with him and Gonzalo. Because Gonzalo is that kind of animal too, it seemed to make more sense to have somebody you know who has so much of the focus of his playing being a, 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 a kind of linear, single-note uh, approach to pair with Gonzalo with his incredible harmonic sense. So that was easy. And then there was Jeff Ballard, who I've wanted to do something with for such a long time. I mean, it's basically almost 20 years since I first heard him on on, on some of those earlier Kurt Rosenwinkel records and then when I moved to New York. And when he lived here, I used to see him all the time. And we've known each other for, for quite a while, but we had never actually, believe it or not, we'd never actually played together at all, not even a note until we did this project. It, it, it's nice when there are some unknowns going into a recording session. And one of them, the big one for me, was what it was going to be like pairing Gonzalo and Jeff. And I couldn't really hear that in my head, but I wanted to hear it in real life. And fortunately for me, it was amazing. <laughs> so that's how that happened. And then beyond that, I, I also wanted to, you know, this is my sixth record. And all of the records that I've done up until now have been quintet or quartet records. Some of them have been live records. And the ones that weren't live were, were recorded in a with a very live approach. Yeah, this is my sixth record. And the, the approach on all of the ones up until now has been whether I mean there's two live recordings in that batch and then the other ones are studio records but but recorded in a in kind of a live recording a, a group in a live fashion type way in other words it's all about the performance uh, of the moment and that's it and and I, I wanted to do something that had some more involved post production on it so this one it's got some string arrangements and uh, and it's got some synths played by Gonzalo and also by me and it also has yeah my my wife Jo Laurie is on it and uh, she sings on uh, two or three of the tunes she actually doubles a solo that I play on soprano which is pretty it's a pretty hairy solo and she manages to completely nail it it's kind of amazing I don't know. a little bit scary <laughs> <laughs> that's cool let me ask you this. You know, whenever you perform you know, or whenever you make an album, jazz is a conversation. What kind of conversation are you having with this album? Oh, that's a good question. I have to, I, I'm going to have to think about that. It's a conversation. For, for me, it's kind of sort of like a, you know, if you imagine like getting outside of music for a moment, if you could have a wish granted to spend half an hour in a room with some of the most interesting people you can think of in the world, you know, alive or dead, <laughs> that's a that's kind of a, a fun sort of fantasy game to to play and you know when you're making music it's yeah it's a similar thing it's it, you you you're interested in the conversation because well for me in my own music making it's one thing to have a clear vision about what you want something to sound like but then it's kind of another step to let go of that vision and let it be adjusted and, and changed and, and enhanced by the vision of other people. That's something that I've always really enjoyed. Uh, I said this in a recent interview. If you, if you have a clear vision of what you want and then you ask people to execute it in exactly the way that you want, well, then the best case scenario is that you, is that you get something that was in your head already, which is cool. But ultimately, I don't want to... I don't in that fantasy scenario I don't want to be sitting at that table in that room on my own just talking to myself about all and uh, you know uh in reinforcing all of my own opinions on things I'd much rather have other people there to 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 challenge me and and give me new ideas and and, and so if we sort of transfer that idea to the world of music right now I can't really think of too many other people that I would want to have in, a, in that room. Each one of them has a really strong musical voice. I mean, if you think about each of those guys individually, they're bringing something to the table that, that, that the others are not. Every, every one of them. And I knew it was going to be an eventful 
conversation. And you have, your, you have ideas about which tunes are going to be more successful or, or the way things are, uh, are going to pan out. And, of course, when you invite people that haven't played together before, because, by the way, you know, uh, Matt and Jeff have played together and Mike and Matt have played together and Gonzalo and I have played together and Mike and I have played together and Matt and I have played together. But Gonzalo had never played with any of the other guys in the room. And Jeff and I had never played together. So there's some chemistry that uh, appears there that will never ha- happen again, you know, even if we did another record or, or played together, you know, just because of the freshness of that. Yeah, does that answer your question? <laughs> it, it does. And, and I guess the one thing that you said out of that that's very striking, which is I think the beauty of the recording process is you don't want this crystallized notion of what you want to go on. You like that element of surprise, and that seems like the beauty of music inherently. Absolutely, yeah. Certainly so, jazz. Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. So, yeah. you know, we spoke exactly one year ago today, kind of talked about things that were going on. Let's say that we keep the schedule and we speak in a year. What's coming up for you? What would you like to see <laughs> transpire in the afterglow of this album and any projects that are happening from here on out? Well, I'm um, I'm hoping if uh, schedules are... A challenge with this band, as you can imagine, but I'm hoping that we'll see some touring with this group or with a group that is uh, pretty close to it. Uh, I will be touring, uh, yeah, between now and, and this time next year, I will be touring twice with Gonzalo for a couple of weeks each time uh, with his Charlie tribute group. And in fact, um, it made me smile to see that Gonzalo has hired Jeff for one of those tours. Um, you know, with me having introduced them, it's always satisfying to know that that you've that you've made a, a connection for other people that, that that they're happy with. I uh, the Owl Trio will be either recording and releasing, or at least recording a new record this year, and I'm, I'm excited about that. I'll be going to Russia in August for the first time. I've never been to Russia before with Alex Sipiaga, the great Russian trumpet player who's been in New York for. Uh, 25 years, I think. Uh, he's, I, I don't know if you're familiar with his playing, but it's, he's a phenomenal, beautifully lyrical trumpet player. So I, I'm excited about doing more stuff with him. And in, in, in fact, we'll be recording for Criss Cross. Uh, we'll be doing his project in September. And in the new year, either at the end of this year or the beginning of next year, I'll be going back to Australia and doing some more touring there, which uh, is always fun, uh, especially <laughs> in the winter months of New York. It's nice to get down to the Southern Hemisphere. Heck yeah. So that'll be happening. Uh, well, I think that's enough for now. Yeah, no, sure that sounds good. Other, other things will be coming up. Life is one big improv game for sure. Um, I'm also working, currently working on uh, my uh, a, a room in my place that's going to be a devoted music studio, so I'm going to my my plan is to spend a lot of time working down there and uh, and doing some more writing for the next album. Right on. Well, hey, Will, thank you for catching up with me on this album with what's been going on, and hopefully we keep this this kind of reverberating thing. And good luck with everything, man. Thank you so much, and it's it's a pleasure to be invited back. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in New York, Kansas City, and spots all over the globe, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Will Vinson for our second interview, a great new album, and his contribution to the world of music. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store, or visit the neonjazz.blogspot.com for all things Neon Jazz. Until next time, enjoy the music, my friends. Jazz.